Well, Samson, lovely to see you again. Thank you. Thanks for... It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for talking with us this afternoon, too. Um, I wonder if you'd start by telling us a little bit about your, your early life, uh, up to the time of your conversion to Christ. Well, I grew up in Venda, that is the northern part of South Africa. And, uh, it was a... Venda is a small tribe. Actually, it was a tribe that has been affected heavily by the division of the boundaries in Africa. 50% of us it's, are in Zimbabwe and 50% in Southern Africa. In South Africa. So I, I'm from a very poor background. My family was really poor. I'm number 12 of 23 children. 23? Yeah, my father had six wives and I'm coming from the last wife. And then we, when I grew up, I was trained to be a witch doctor, which is the term called, coined by the missionaries. And then... How would you say it in, in Benda? They would call him Nanga, which means a doctor. A, they call them doctors. Yes. And then, and the, and that person is the core or the center of the tribe. Because when Whatever you need, you have to consult with your manga. And then, unfortunately, when the missionary came, they didn't realize the centrality of that person. And that's why they named them the doctor to discredit them. And they made people to consult the doc with doctors during the night and spend their time in the church during the day. So they created dualism. But that, that, that was, for me, it was, it, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the study, I enjoyed everything. Until the time when I was just about to finish, two boys walked into our home. They were young people coming from the Reformed Church. They were doing house to house visits. And then they approached us. But then it was 1991, we, 92, we just got married in 1991. Mm -hmm. 92, nice. 72. Yeah. 1972. So, 72. Oh, I thought, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, 1972. So we got married in 19, 19, 1971. And in 1972 is the time when these young people came to visit us. And I think because I married Mavis, who was coming from the church. She might have been praying that she she's now in trouble. And uh, they preached up to us, talked to us about First John 4.4. 4. The one who is in you, it's greater than the one who is in the world. It is that verse that changed my life completely. The interesting thing about my conversion is that from the beginning, I could see that these are two kingdoms. You can't serve both. You have to be in one or the other. So I, from the beginning, I never embraced dualism. I don't know how. I don't know why. And I, and I don't know how I missed that because it's very, many people couldn't dodge that. Then that's, that's how I came to Christ. And then I formed a we formed, actually, a gospel team called Safe to Safe Evangelical Team. And it was through that team that many, many pastors that are functioning in Venda, they came out of that team. Even in the Reformed Church, in the Presbyterian and Lutheran Church, they came out of that gospel team. And so that's, that's how I came to the Lord. And you would have been teaching at that time? Yes, in, I was in public schools. In public school, I taught in public schools for for twenty years. But during that twenty years, the the the, the, the last ten, we 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 had a problem. We had a boy at home who was very gifted. He could read and write before he went to school. 
And one day he was reading the Bible in English. And uh, we, there was a, a guy from the neighboring school. He was the vice principal of a primary school nearby. And he said to, to me, bring him to us. We will damage him for you. That is, that is the statement for me. I registered that statement I'm so, sure. yeah. so literally. But it wasn't, I, I'm sure he was joking. But for me, it was real. Then I started to compare the public education and Christian education. So there were Christian schools in... in there were no Christian no, schools. No. I ju just came by. Yes. Then I went to Holland in 1979. And then while I was in Holland, I saw Christian schools. I came back from Holland, I asked one of the doctors from Holland, and I asked him, what can we do to have our own Christian schools? I was thinking of my, my boy. And then he said, oh no, we can start Christian school. We can start, it's easy, let's have a meeting. And then he called a meeting of four. And four of us were discussing about how to start a Christian school. And we were having a number of problems. Where will we get the money? Where will the classroom, the teachers? And he was just saying, oh, we have money, let's collect. And then we collected 40 rand that day. And he said, no, we have money. We, we will go and open an account. And when they said, about teachers? He said, Samson is a teacher. And then, so, then the vision of Christian schools grew in me strongly and strongly until in, uh, we, we, we took time to start this school. We started in 1980, 1980, 1980 and then in 1986 we opened the first school, Chikeva. Chikeva. Yeah, which means she, it's uh, school, uh, it's church, but uh, it's community, it's church, a school, church and community. So we, we started the school. Then in 1990, I became the principal of that school. You'd already been a principal in a secondary school, public school, is that right? Yes, I was the principal of a public school, big yes, one. Yes. Yeah. I've been in public school for 20 years and I went through all the ranks of the public school. So in 1990, I resigned from public school to become a Christian must principal have been a, a of... a big step for you, a big move? Oh, it was big. It was big because it was... Uh, it, it meant lots of things. I was dropping the salary, but it was through the encouragement of my wife. I was dropping the salary. I was dro it was it was big. I was moving from a big school to a, to a school where I would be heading 14 children. 14 children? Yeah. Yes. Well. Yeah. That in the secondary school and yes. then the rest were primary. Yes. But uh, fortunate enough, God blessed me so much. I I was at Chikeva for 11 years, and when I left Chikeva, it, uh, it was it was a very well known, well developed, well built school, and it has its fame. So it was very difficult for me to leave Chikeva. So what would you say? were the alternative practices that you developed in the Christian school in comparison to your work in public schools? The big challenge came when the year I became a principal in, at Chikewa in, in 1990. 1991, one morning I received a telephone call from a Canadian lady she was in Van der Bell Park, which is 700 kilometers away from Chikeva. And then she, she called me, she said, Samson, I want to come and visit your school. I'm the one who sent you boxes of books and so on. So I was very excited about this call. I said, but I said, yes, I'll come, I'll come and pick you up. She didn't know how far she was. Yeah. And then we had to, I asked my pastor to drive. 700 kilometer to fetch her and 700 kilometer back when she came back and then I took my turn. Then I was driving her back to find the bell park 
on the way, she asked me a very difficult question. She said to me, Samson, can you be a principal of a Christian school without Christian education? I said, you know, I like Christian education. I wanted to study, but, but then I had seven children. And then I said, I have seven children, I have a wife to take care of, and then I, but I like to study. And then, but, and then I said, I don't have money. She said, you have money. I said, I don't. She said, you do. I said, I don't. She, she, then tears came from her. She was crying, and she said, you do. Then I parked the car because she was crying. Then I, and then she said to me, I taught in Christian schools for 43 years. Out of 43 years, I put money aside. During 43 years, I put money aside. And some of that, that money, I sent it to South Africa, to University of Cape Town, Department of Religion. I asked them, we asked them if they can find a Christian who is willing to study masters in Christian education. For five years they couldn't find a person in Africa, a black person in Africa. And then she said, I found you. Then I was crying as well. Yes, yes, indeed. And then she said, I found you. You will use that money. And that's how I came to ICS to do Masters in Christian Education. And that lady, Amy Swapsen, she didn't know that she, she invested so much in me, but not realizing that she was investing in Africa. And then she's now with the Lord, and but the, the, I am what she what I, what I did is just according to her plan. Yeah. Well, I'm sure she knows that, Samson. I'm, I'm sure, sure she knows her that. Her face she and her hope. Uh, I hope. Yeah, she, she did. She had a vision. Yes. Because uh, what, why did she send money to Africa? And why did that money just stay there for five years? That's what, that was very interesting. So, yes, that's one thing that I'm, I'm very, very much excited about. ICS prepared me so much. They contributed so much in my in what I'm doing today. And I don't I don't think they knew as well that what they were doing. It was just God. Because I don't think I knew what I was doing. So what kind of things do you think you learned at and I said, the thought taught you through ICS, yes. I said, so. the, the very, very important thing that I learned, <coughs> you, you know, if you, if you know the history of Africa, it's full of contradiction between the African culture and the Western culture. And for me to have this window of studying the Western world view, and comparing it with the African worldview and uh, starting to understand the biblical worldview, challenging those two worldviews that, were, that are just conflicting in the life of an African person, it was a very, it was, an, it was a great advantage for me. That's the most thing that I learned. And that's why the worldview was the main thing that I learned and then a biblical worldview. And then so when I went to Africa, worldview was like a new theory coming in. I mean, people were studying philosophy and philosophy without understanding the worldview. So when I start to unpack that through studies, through my own thinking and through everything, then it, it, I started to see the future of education, of edu future of Africa, in a more clear vision. I started in South Africa. I, I was appointed as the director of 
the associate director of ACSI South Africa in 2001. And that was also a very big challenge. I was coming from Reformed and going to the Evangelical, which means which was another bridge of co uh, co combining the two way of thinking, the, the, the Reformed way of thinking, Evangelical way of thinking, Reformational way of thinking, challenging the Reformed way of thinking, all those contradictions became clearer and clearer. And now, when I look at what I, what I did, my studies, as trained as a witch doctor, it's now playing a major role in what I'm doing in Africa. If I wasn't trained, I would be baffled and challenged by African way of thinking. But because of that background, I speak with the voice of authority, challenging animism, challenging dualism, and challenging secularism. I can challenge those with authority. So you're still, you're now working with ACSI and you're the Africa director. Yes. I mean, you've said that, um, well, I've heard the stories, Christian schooling in, in Africa is absolutely exploding. I mean, you were telling me just the other day that in the Democratic Republic of the Congo alone, there were 17,000. Seven, oh, seven, no, no, it's 18. 18 17 yeah. last year, 18,000 this year, and I was yeah. amazed. And 4.7 yeah. million yes. students. Yes. And that's one country. It's a big country, isn't and it? And 161,000 teachers. 161,000, 161,000 teachers. Teachers, yeah. And the challenge that we have, I will show you some of the documentations. The, 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 the challenge, what we did actually, if I can go back a little bit, when I was appointed the director of ACSI in Africa, I realized that it would be a very difficult task. My question was, will I just go to Ghana and say I'm your director, or go to Nigeria and say I'm your director? I said it's impossible. Africa is a continent, and it's a huge continent. Yes. And then, so I, we started to plan a plan of inviting all Africans in 2007. So we had the first round table in 2007. At that first round table, it was attended by 32 nations. And out of 32 nations, 26 were African nations. And at, at the end of that round table, we came up with a declaration. It's a very powerful de declaration. It was like a mandate that was uh, the Africans were giving to me that the, you need to follow this mandate in order to develop Africa. I'll show you also that, those, that declaration. And then, but in order to do that, we divided Africa into five regions. Uh, that, that is Southern Africa, Central Africa, East Africa, West Africa Francophone, and West Africa Anglophone. And then we left the northern side of Africa. It's a very Muslim area, but it's not ignored. We, we have one school now in Tunis, which is a blessing. Then people went to their different regions with the mandate of starting their own regional roundtables. So the first regional roundtable was in Congo. It started by the Congolese because, they, they, as I said, it is, it is the only country that I know in the world that where the church is, 65 denominations, mm -hmm. from Mennonite to Anglican or from uh, Pentecostals to Anglican, you can start from anywhere. They all form one coalition under one name, the Church of Christ in Congo. And that college, under that unity, they have 18,000 schools, as I mentioned, and then 161,000 teachers, and then 4.7 million students. And because of what we did in Congo, in one region, in Kinshasa region, the Synod, 
of the 65 denominations took a decision in 2009, August. The decision was that from now, we are handing all our 18,000 schools to ACSI. And then the mandate to us was to make sure that their schools are true Christian schools. That's a big mandate. And then when we said to them that, no, you know what? We have a saying in English that when you eat an elephant, it's one bite at a time. And then the bishop, who is the leader of the schools, he said, Bishop Nyamuke, he said to us, we don't, unfortunately, we don't have deep freezers in Congo. You will have to eat the elephant fast. And that's why the project in Congo now, we call it an elephant project, where we want to eat the elephant fast. So we, that's, that's, we, we, we are on in Congo, everything is going well. And then, but just recently, the, in Central Africa, we have Cameroon. In Cameroon, there are over 1,000 schools. You have Chad, which is a, Muslim, a kind of Muslim country. In Chad, Southern Chad, we have over 500 schools. And very interesting, yeah, 500 in Chad. Very interesting, there are, we have three schools among the Muslims, where the Muslim parents ask the Christian to start schools among the, Muslim, among the Muslim community. And they're sending their children, and one time, the Imams, the head of the mosque, he said to the people that they need to take their children out of the school, otherwise they will be cut off the mosque. And they said they would rather be cut off and keep their children in Christian schools, which is very interesting. And then in East Africa, we have schools, lots of schools in Uganda and Tanzania and Kenya, but we are operating from Uganda. In Southern Africa, we are operating from South Africa. Zimbabwe has just taken off. We are we, 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 starting to see countries developing. Schools are just mushrooming everywhere in Africa. And then in West Africa, Anglophone, our core country is Nigeria. And then in in Nigeria only, just last month, I went to Nigeria to meet a church that has two universities and 116 schools. And they want to hand over all their schools and universities to ACSI. Besides, ACSI doesn't actually own the schools, though. No, we don't. We, we, we just, we, what we do, yes. we network them, we service them by training teachers, by training the leadership, by training, training the governance, by we, we advocacy, speak with governments on their behalf, we meet the, the government, and actually may the main function of HSI is to network them, and network the churches as well. Like in Cameroon, we, 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 we had a round table and 21 denominations come together, and they were saying it was the first time in their lives that they were together around one table. That's them, our main function that, that we do. And then and we, we, we are developing material now in, in order to address the, this transition or this wave that uh, from, from African perspective. We're developing material from African perspective and then, because I realized that our thinking and Western way of thinking are two different way of thinking. And if we don't understand that we have our own way of thinking, we may, we may continue with the imposed or foreign Christianity. We need to have a new brand of Christianity. So you said before you, you were fighting animism, secularism, dualism. Yeah. Individualism. Yeah. Perhaps. I mean, so. And uh, Islam. And Islam. Yeah. Christ, uh, African culture appears to be more communal than Western culture. Exactly. 
exactly. African culture it's more communal than Western culture which is based on individual. And then besides that, when we think, we think from holistic holistic perspective, while the West think from details and then you know it's like a puzzle. You start the puzzle with the putting together the little things until you get the, the full picture. We start from full picture, mm -hmm. going down, cutting the puzzle down. So you build it up, we cut it down. And that's how we, 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 we are different. And then the Western people think in a linear way, and we think differently. And if you don't consider those type of thinking, and if you don't consider those things, this way of thinking, and then and the communality, and then, and we believe that a human, I'm a human because of other humans. So that's, 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 that's the, and those differences, and that's why I like to read uh, John, uh, Benny van der Waard. He, he tried by all means to, to, to put those things clearer so that when we come together, because we definitely need each other, when we come together, we should, one shouldn't assimilate the other. And I used to say it shouldn't be a stew, it should be a salad. We need to see that this one is there, this one is there, this one is there, and then we share the gifts. <laughs>